Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the Digital Kitchen. Today I'm going to be joined by Andy Ward from Williams, who is going to talk us through the fantastic range they've got here at the NCEC. So let's see what Williams have got to offer. Andy, thank you very much for joining me today at the NCC. Thanks for your time, Chris. Uh, Williams, so do you want to tell us about them, what they do and uh, what's the history? Yeah, no problem at all. Um, well, Williams are a British manufactured refrigeration company. Um, been around since 1980. And we do everything for a kitchen right the way through from the back of house. And we have actually some front of house displays, that sort of thing. Um, manufactured in the UK, as I mentioned earlier, over in Norfolk. Um, and everything you can see here that we have on the stand, we should all have available in stock ready to go out the door as well. So uh, let's, let's start with this side and we can yeah, work absolutely. I was going to say, let's have a look at the stand, see what we've got to offer. Yeah, no so problem. we've got a... It's not wooden, is it? It's, it's no, what, what, <laughs> what we've tried to do here is we've, we've done a vinyl wrapped fridge here. Um, if you look in the, in the showroom that you've got here, it's, there's a whole sea of stainless steel. So what we've tried to do is do something a little bit different. Yeah, um, and, catch your eyes. Yeah, and to show something that we can do, do at Williams. Um, vinyl wrapping something, or chameleon as we call it, it's designed to do two things. It's either designed to blend in or to stand out. Yeah. So if you want to have something that's sort of got your label, your, your logo, that sort of thing on it, we can do that. It's all computer designed, and it's using the same vinyl wrap that they've wrapped vehicles in. So it's, it's, it's durable. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to understand the test. There's a big call for that then. I guess there's a lot of um, branding and stuff going on, so that'd be a great idea to brand it if you've got like a, a quirky sort of uh, restaurant or something like that and you want to really get the theme going, then it's perfect for that sort of thing. But is there a protection element to it as well if it's outside or something like that? Um, we, we don't tend to put them outside, but there is a protection element. Because obviously, the vinyl wrap, same as it on a vehicle, yep. it's protecting the stainless steel there. It's putting another layer, of, layer there. Um, it's easy to clean as well, that side of things. Um, the thing with the, with the vinyl wrapping, as you mentioned, we are doing more more for, um, for for companies, various things. We do a meat aging thing, which we'll be touching on in a minute. And most of the meat ages that we serve have been vinyl wrapped. They've been coloured, or they've got uh, got labelling on the door, that sort of thing. So depending on where they're going, because when you're doing front of house stuff, it's it's there to catch people's eyes. So that's that's why we do this sort of thing. We have a, a, a brick effect one there that we try to do, which if you go in, um, I don't know, in a, in a country style pub, that would then try to blend in a little bit yeah. more, so you wouldn't see it. Yeah, it's just quite cool. Isn't it? It's just yeah, a yeah. nice theme on here. We've done some for, for care homes and that sort of thing in coffee areas. So again, you can match wallpaper and things so it, it, it blends in so you can't see it. So it's, it's designed to do that. Okay, perfect. And in terms of uh, Williams themselves then, is there a good, better, best sort of scenario in terms of the range or is it all one level? Um, it, it, we, we've got two or three different levels depending on what it was. But we, because we manufacture the units ourselves, we don't use down, it's the same metal, it's the same it's the same fridge systems that are running it. So this is a, a unit called a jade. We also do a unit called a garnet. Um, in all intents and purposes, the fridge systems and the metal and the carcass are exactly the same. It's the controller that's different and aesthetics that are different. Okay. So it's not like some of our competitors, which would have a, a budget level and then, then go through. So we would have no problem with sticking this in a, in a busy hospital, a busy restaurant, busy hotel, or if it's going into a, a small cafe, it, it makes no difference. It will do exactly what it needs to do to actually do the job. Okay, perfect. Sometimes it gets, you know, can be a bit confusing in terms of what fridge you need for what purpose, you know. Am I putting a fridge in a, a room downstairs where I'm going into it twice or three times a day, or am I using it on a in yeah. service where I'm opening and closing it, you know, a hundred times through service, that sort of thing? No, that's so with Williams, it's all one. Yeah. So it's a lot easier to choose if you want Williams. It's, it's that one. It's just a case of what's going to fit them. Yeah. Well, what you, what you can see here is, is we've got a bottom mounted unit. Yeah. Um, top mounted unit. So this is a 300 litre and this is a, uh, a 620 litre. So look at them. You wouldn't have thought that, 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 that there's that much difference, but there is. It's all about the size of it. Bottom mounted units are great if you're a, a small country pub or a, a low level kitchen. So if you had a kitchen ceiling about here and it's above that, it's just going to contain all the heat above it, it's going to cook itself and it won't maintain the temperature, won't be able to recover as quick, that sort of thing. So that's when you'd go for a, a bottom mounted. And we do a bottom mounted in a three, 300, 400 and 500 litre model. So you, you've got full flexibility right the way through from, from that. And then you come up to the, to the big boy and we do this in a single door and double door. You're talking, you know, big, big cabinets. Big units. 
But with our cabinets compared to some of our competitors when you get to this level is this will actually go through a standard door. So you can just take this, one man can wheel it in, position it, so you haven't got added costs of two-man deliveries or anything like that. It's, it's, it's very good for that side of things. Okay, perfect. Uh, and I, obviously the range here, we've got a small amount of what you've got available. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, but you can obviously get doubles and, and so on and so forth. That's right, yeah. And this one we do um, single door, double door. And as I mentioned, we do the, the three, four and 500 unit from that side of things. And then we go into small under counters. Yeah. Um, we do those in single door, double door, chef's drawers and things like that, which we touch on there. Um, for tight areas in kitchens and things, what we've looked at as well is this is a slimline counter. Um, so it's only 500 mil front to back. So a lot of areas, you know, kitchens are getting smaller. We're getting squeezed as caterers. <laughs> yeah, we're getting bigger and yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> machines get smaller. <laughs> so yeah, what's happening is, is, is they want the, the covers out the front so the yeah. kitchen gets smaller. Um, so when you start looking at that, a 500 mil counter is great. So it's two third gastro, so okay. it'll go through on that. So these, uh, the big ones, I'm just going back to them, because you say they're two thirds, they take full one one? That one would, would, would take a two thirds in there on yeah. the 300 and then it'd get bigger. When you start talking about the big boy, that's a, a two by one gastro. Okay. And they can go in there on the shelves or straight in on the runners. So you can take it straight out of there in the container, straight into a combi, that that's sort good. of things. Or if you've done salad, straight in onto a counter. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay. So when we're talking about our counters here, the systems are cassette systems. So what that would mean, I mean, if, if this is a counter in a kitchen, yep. the reason that a chef wants a counter or a caterer wants a counter is the fact that they use it. They use it as a worktop or they've got microwaves, that sort of thing on it. So if there's a failure on the unit, you don't want an engineer lying across your kitchen during service, trying to fix it or having to take the whole thing out of the way and then you're left with nothing. Yeah. So what you can do with this is a couple of screws, take the front cover off and the engineer can take the whole fridge system out, work on it in his van, do any hot works outside the kitchen, you've still got the counter there. Yeah, perfect. And then you can, then you can put it back yeah, in. Yeah, Places don't like hot works going on inside the building. That's right. Obviously, yeah. regs and things like that. So it's yeah. a really good feature to have. Um, oh. In terms of um, energy side of stuff, then, because obviously that's a very important thing currently. Yeah. Um, what are Williams doing in terms of making it more energy efficient? Is there any sort of uh, USPs really? I guess well, for energy. Yeah. I mean, energy is is a big thing for everyone at the moment. I yeah. mean, one of the things that we we have on all our systems is our core smart controller. The, the controller works out what the machine's doing. It, it works out that if it's in a school, it works out that the doors hasn't been opened since Friday, so it would actually t just turn everything down and just maintain the temperature inside the cabinet. Okay. Whereas if you, if you go back a few years ago, it's it just, just set on off. time, it's yeah. going to go and keep on going. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the, the, the controller works out what the machine's doing, it put itself through a defrost if it needs to, it work out the airflow across the evaporators, that sort of thing, so it's constantly maintaining the, the, the best energy yeah. consumption for the cabinet. And so. I guess in this day and age, obviously a lot of people are repairing, repairing, repairing because of the cost of new units and stuff, yeah. but I guess when you weigh up the cost of uh, repair, versus the cost of what the, an older unit will be running in terms of energy mm -hmm. with the price of an upgrade, it may be worth thinking about, all right, it's going to be a bit of a cost up front, but give it 12 months, 18 months or whatever, and you'll probably be to see that return. Oh, just without. in energy and obviously the efficiency of the machine as well. Yeah, some of the, some of the tests we've done, the, the new gases, the new compressors, the new evaporator system that are coming through in refrigeration has been vast since we had to start doing the energy performance standard. We've, the refrigeration in the catering industry was the first one to go to it. So if you look at, I don't know, if you buy a washing machine from a, from a retailer, it, it's got A graded right through to G, whatever. We had to do that. We're the first ones in the catering industry to do so. So there's been a load of investment in that. If you was buying the, a freezer in the big one at the end there, our, our model again, Against our own model from 2015, you're going to save £1,900 in energy alone right. in okay. a year. So if you think it comes with a two-year parts and able warranty, so if you've got an old unit that's got needs a service call on it, it's almost like, hang on, I might as well spend the money on getting a new one. It's going to have paid for itself within its warranty period, and then I'm going to be saving yeah, for, in the, for the next few years coming yeah. on. So it, yeah. It's, it's certainly a big thing at the moment, especially with, with the hike in energy costs yeah, as well. Yeah, it's, it's not cheap. So, so um, Sorry, I was just going to say, also with the systems that we put on, you mentioned earlier about, you know, it's not downgraded, you can keep going into them. It's, it's a service cabinet, so it's designed to be open and closed and used multiple times a day. Yeah. Some of the competitors that we, we, we're up against, what you'll find is that their energy rating, but there's only, that they've got, but people are only going into them two or three times a day. It's not being used 
in a true environment. Yeah, yeah as absolutely. yourself would have done in, in your catering, that you're yeah. going to be in and out of this unit oh, constantly. constantly. Absolutely. That's, that'd that's be my prep area. This is where I'd stay all day. This would be my home. I'd have my ticket machine, yeah. and uh, we'd go from there, and I'd open the close that door all the time, and if I'd run out of something and had to go to the walk-in, well, head chef would be on my case. But yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Luckily, so, those so, things are gone. Yeah, so we're that, that's how we design them. <laughs> they're, they're designed to be used as a caterer would use them, and the energy rating that we give them is from that side of things, so we have no uh, no qualms about the quotes or you know of the of the energy consumptions that we yeah, use because no, that's brilliant. how it's tested. Yeah, because a lot of the display stuff as well, um, it's, it's always good worth looking at. So people buy like the grab fridges and stuff, and they say like you can't leave stuff stored in there overnight because of the way the refrigerant works and stuff. So that's always worth mentioning as well when it comes to refrigeration. Is make sure you get in a unit that's fit for the purpose you want it for. That's right. Um, you know, it's great to always look at the price point, but sometimes if you're not doing it properly, it's going to bite you along the line somewhere else. That, so, that's right. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I mean. If, if you're in and out of a, a cheaper counter fridge all the time, it can't maintain temperature and you've got meat inside there and things like that which are a bit more susceptible to fluctuations in temperature, you can really see uh, the, the product deteriorate if it's not actually chilled correctly. Because yeah. yeah. what you'll find is in a catering environment, if it's a hot kitchen and the machine's not up for it, from about 10 o'clock in the morning when the chef starts going there to do his prep, through to he's finished, the machine's never at temperature. No. It, it's, and the temperature that's actually reading is temperature that's yeah, sort it's like, not it's, 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 it's not true. <laughs> yeah. and that's how you that's why we do the probe testing inside the prison exactly. rather than looking off the unit. Exactly. But, yeah, so that's another story. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other unit as we're coming along, these are chef's drawers, um, so they're very temped. You can have them stacked as we've got here, and you can set the unit um, from sort of like minus 20 degrees up through to four degrees, depending on what you've got, what your menu is, okay. what, you, what you decide to need at the day. Um, the unit itself takes a big two by one in there, so you can take that out, put oh, new ones in, put it in there. there. So some of our competitors have different systems inside. This is one that we feel is the best. It's easy, it's more flexible from the chef's point of view. Yeah. So, and we do this in two different types. We've got the side engine, as you can see here, but we do a rear engine version as well. So depending on the okay. space you've got available. And I guess going up from that sort of system would be something like one of your blast chillers? Yes. We've not got one. No, yeah, we, we haven't got here. blast chillers here, but we do a full range of blast chilling from a 10 kilo under counter machine up to a 50 kilo in what we class as reaching. Yeah. Um, we also then have a dedicated one for combi ovens, which would take a, a, a trolley straight out of a 20 grid rationale or a 20 grid Lanox combi. So you can take it straight out and straight in. So that's, that's a, a cabinet rather than a modular. And yeah. then we go into the modular stuff, which is, you, you could, we just stop. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's, you know, stuff. what do you require, and we'll build it that, that size for you. Yeah. Okay. So I guess from kitchen fridges, from storage fridges, then we go to your display range. Yeah, we've got a, a display range here. Um, this is the smallest one we do, and then we do right up to 1800 wide. This one is green. We can colour them, or we can wrap them. You can have them white. You can have them mirror stainless steel. You can. You can. There's a lot of options. This one is open with a security shutter. So you mentioned earlier about products being left. If this was a, going into a school where it's out in a corridor or out our front of the house and it's not behind a, a secured thing, they'd either have to empty it every, every night or they need a security shutter. And yep. that's what this one's got. So you can lock it yep. down. It's rolled. It's aluminium. Locked on both sides. It stops little fingers going in there and, <laughs> and grabbing things. Yeah, wouldn't do that, surely. Not no, well, let's see. <laughs> so Williams obviously does refrigeration, so I assume you don't do a heated version. Yes, we do. Oh, you do? We, we do oh, a I heated think. version of these as well. So you could have these side by side. So in a grab and go sort of scenario, you could have I don't know, pasties, pizza, that, that sort of thing, all inside one. Drinks, cold sandwiches, that sort of things in another. Um, we also do them with doors, so you can have sliding doors or opening doors as well for energy saving, that sort of thing. So it's just working out what, what's right for you. What's so right it really for is a massive range then, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fast. It really is fast. Okay. And I guess then, last but not least, on the, in the NCC, we've got the, uh, the Old Faithful. Yes, what we every chef really likes a cold room. Um, <laughs> what we try to do here is we try to show the flexibility that we do. Because we manufacture them ourselves, we're not buying in panels from someone else and putting different fridge systems on. We actually manufacture it, we design it, we put the systems on that are going to run it. So the brown panel on the side here is to show that we can do external ones. Yep. Um, it's a class of the temporary structure, so you don't need planning permission as well. So it'll have a weatherproof top on it. It's all 
coated on the outside so it's all, all weatherproof as well. Um, standard finish would be white anyway for a kitchen, but we also do stainless steel as well, so we try to show that on the door. So not many people would buy a, a half door <laughs> version, but we're just showing it. Because they run out of paint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, what, and what you can see from that is also is, is the, the build quality that we do. So it's got the, the chrome heavy duty hinges, snubber, door thing. Um, the doors themselves, as, as you open it, rise. So it's classed as a rise and fall door. So okay. just from, yeah. So yeah. from a chef's point of view, he can come in, he can open it. There would be strip curtains down here, as standard anyway. But it's easy for loading with the door shut. And then when he comes out with his stuff, just needs to push it, and it will actually positively shut. And as you see, the snubber there will actually pull it shut. Don't have to kick it. The amount of kitchens you go into, it's got boot marks up there because chefs have to kick the door shut. You don't have anger to do anger management. That. It's anger management. You, what can I say? you don't have to do any of that. <laughs> also, we're showing things like we've got the the foamed in electric sockets. The thing is with a cold room, when they're new, they're great. When start people start to drill holes in them to, to fix sockets, that sort of thing, all you're doing then is you're breaking into the foam, which then deteriorates the cabinet. So if we know at the start, if this was going to, I mean, a lot of these, you'd have a door here and then chefs would have tables in front of them. If you need that sort of thing, it'd be great to put a, 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 a conduited, foamed in conduit, shall I say, and then you can just plug the machine into there. You don't have to worry about it. So really it's pretty much designed what you want on paper and you can create it. So yeah. obviously this is an example of a size, but yeah, yeah, we I've can do it. Some of the ones you've done in, in restaurants in Bristol where they're massive and yeah, you could have glass. We do meat. There's an image in the outside there, which is of a steakhouse, which has got a big glass front. We've got copper doors. You can clad them. Um, and one of the things we do for, for your team and for the customers, we can do everything from a site survey right the way through to disposal. And, and you guys don't have to get involved. So from a customer's point of view, it's peace of mind that they know it's going to be looked after by the people who actually do it, manufacture it, um, and it, it's just going to be taken away. So we okay, do all site surveys right the way through to commissioning, training on it, that sort yeah. of things as well. Perfect. So I guess, yeah, I guess the story here is uh, to conclude is if there is a, you're looking at refrigeration, you're looking at getting something new, then check the Williams uh, uh, itinerary out. I guess you've got something yeah, for everyone. <laughs> that's right. I mean, our website's there. It's all available. There's case studies on all the sorts of products we do as well. Um, as you said, this is just a small array of what we do. Yeah. Um, and it, it's it's a company that's the, the ethos is there for for longevity, for, for build quality, um, and it, it's, it's a great company. I mean, I've worked for them for 23 years, so it, from my point of view... Don't look at David 25, yeah. I don't know what you mean. Thanks, but <laughs> it's, been, it's been great, and you know, I yeah. hope to do so for a long time to come. Perfect. I guess uh, we go on to some of the more specialist stuff you do. I guess specialist, but maybe not so much now, because it's coming back into fashion, but you mentioned meat aging in here. Yeah. So you do a range of meat aging cabinets in terms of this one, obviously the tall one we've got in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, is that you, you seeing it now currently coming through being more popular? Yeah, it, it, the thing with meat aging is it, it's it's not just a caterer that's getting involved in it. it it's it's the people at home they want to have, they're, they're buying something with quality. So what we're seeing is we're selling a lot of the meat aging cabinets and cold rooms into butchers, master butchers, that sort of thing. So people can go and see. People buy with their eyes, um, and it's meat has gone away from when my nan used to buy it. Bless her, if it, it had to be bright red and you know that, that's fresh. It's not like that now when you're talking about certainly things like beef. Beef is the big one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but you can age other meats as well. But you know, you can lamb, you can age poultry with geese and things yeah, like that as well. So stuff. people are wanting quality and they don't mind spending a bit more and getting a decent, decent yeah. thing from that. So the, the cabinet we build is, is built on the, the chassis of the big unit on the end there. So it's that sort of size. Um, we've got case studies on our website which show master butchers that have got three, four or five cabinets behind there and some of them even store meat for people so they go and they'll buy a strip loin and they'll put it in there and age it and pay the butcher to actually age the meat for them so yeah it's a vast thing so you're talking restaurants butchers um, farm shops that sort of thing anywhere that's that's doing something that people will pay a little bit more money for than yeah, it's possible. great great investment it really is and the flavor and stuff you get from it is fantastic yeah, it's different. so it's great to talk about aging and all the different specialities you do and things like that and uh, i guess it just leads me to say thank you very much for coming in and talking no, to no. us today and thanks for uh, your time brilliant and guys as always if you've got any questions or you want to see the units they're here at the ncc uh, reach out to myself or andy and we'd be more than happy to answer any questions you've got and of course come down have a go, you know, look at the machines, look at the quality and uh, make a decision from there. So Andy, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Chris. Guys, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much. For more information on the digital kitchen at the NCC and facility hire, visit the website or give us a call. Details on this are below.
And don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for regular updates on the Digital Kitchen. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.